in 1990, the world was introduced to the classic song, You Can't Touch This, in which MC Hammer performed a dance that he called the Chinese Typewriter, so named because he thought that a Chinese typist would have to scramble all around in order to reach all of the keys on a giant typewriter designed for the language. Chinese is a non-alphabetic language, which means that instead of using letters combined into words, Chinese uses characters, which by themselves represent entire words or can be combined to form simple ideas. For example, communism is made up of four characters, which when put together create the equivalent of the English word, but it can be broken down. The first two characters together form communist, the second two ideology, but we're not done yet. The first character is the Chinese representation of share, the second production, the third name, and the final meaning. While there are over 50,000 distinct characters in the Chinese language, only about 20,000 of those are in common use. And according to UNESCO's Asia Pacific Cultural Center, last accessed September 9th of 2016, in order to be considered literate, the average Chinese speaker needs to have a firm understanding of about 2,000 characters. It makes the Trap Game of Thrones characters seem easy. The average keyboard, however, only has 84 to 101 keys. So how does a Chinese keyboard work? It's complicated. The Chinese keyboard has been the butt of jokes since the early 1900s, but its significance is no laughing matter. The creation of the Chinese keyboard offers insight into languages, literacy rates, technological ingenuity, and ethnocentrism, which is why we look first toward the development and evolution of the Chinese keyboard, second look at the significance the Chinese keyboard has had in society, and finally examine the conundrums it has created for Chinese speakers. In the 1900s, Chinese speakers were faced with a problem, how to integrate their non-alphabetic language into a very alphabetic technology. The evolution of the Chinese keyboard begins first in a typewriter, and second in modern computing. For those of us without much imagination, you know, Americans, we imagine a giant, almost ridiculous typewriter with one key for each character in the Chinese language. According to Tom Mullaney, Stanford professor and one of the foremost experts on the evolution of the Chinese keyboard, in the podcast entitled Opinions on May 16th, May 4th of 2016, the expectation in 1900 was that China would have to alphabetize in order to become a member of the family of modern nations. However, the alphabet didn't conquer Chinese. The Chinese conquered the alphabet. Instead of changing their language or abandoning the typewriter, Chinese engineers abandoned the keyboard altogether. Instead of rows of keys like that on a standard typewriter, the Chinese typewriter is essentially a miniature printing press with rows of blocks that can be rearranged and maneuvered, arranged in the order of the Chinese dictionary with one character per block. The typist would put the character they wish to type front and center in the arrangement, where a hook would then grab it and press it onto the page, much like a standard typewriter. You can't exactly turn your computer into a giant printing press, so with the popular advent of modern computing, the Chinese keyboard had to reinvent itself Again, the Chinese, Chinese keyboards use a standard key, Chinese computers use a standard keyboard with a unique system to convert that keyboard into one that can create Chinese characters. For example, this is a turtle. This is the Chinese character for turtle. And this is how it's pronounced. Good. This would then be typed into the computer using the standard alphabet, and the computer would then convert this back into this. This can be kind of complicated, because as the BBC's language guide points out, Mandarin contains some sounds that don't exist in English. Additionally, some characters can sound incredibly similar, with meanings distinguished by intonations that simply don't transfer into electronic writing. While it may seem a bit complicated and convoluted, it's actually fairly similar to Guitar Hero where instead of strumming strings, you would press colored buttons on the neck of the guitar to create a sound that the strings otherwise would. While it may be a bit confusing to English speakers, millions of school children master it with ease. While we don't start learning to type until late elementary school, our Chinese counterparts started learning in preschool, which is why we will look secondly toward the significance the Chinese keyboard has had on society.
first, on international technologies, and secondly, on Chinese society itself. Everyone knows that autocorrect is the worst. Surprisingly though, autocorrect actually has its roots in the Chinese typewriter. Typists quickly realized they were typing the same words and phrases rather frequently, and rearranged their typewriters to put those characters front and center in the arrangement. This is, according to foreign policy on May 12th of 2016, the first widespread implementation of predictive text. These attitudes extended into Chinese development when the computer came around. Because the Chinese typing system can be so difficult and finicky to use, Chinese programmers developed methods of predictive texting decades before it was even an idea in most nations. Computers think ahead as individuals type, suggesting different interpretations of characters in order to make the system overall more efficient. Consequently, even though they're typing in a rough interpretation of their language in an alphabet that's not their own, Chinese typists are actually faster than those in other languages. Additionally, the Chinese or the implementation of the Chinese keyboard has massively increased Chinese literacy rates. According to the Asia Pacific Cultural Center, last or at the Asia Pacific Cultural Center in the 1950s, literacy rate in China was about 20%, rising to 85% in the early 2000s whereas literacy rate now is 96.4%. Among people ages 15 to 24 years old specifically, the rate is a whopping 99.6%. The same happens for, or the, the popular advent of the, or well, a number of factors went into this increased literacy rate. Experts cite the keyboard as a main contributing factor. The same happens for us when we learn another language. By applying our grammar rules and concepts to something so foreign, we come to understand our own language even better. Chinese school children essentially learn two language systems. First, the character system and a corresponding pronunciation key. While it may take a little longer, the result is an impressive literacy rate. While the Chinese keyboard has had impacts in almost all areas of society, not all of them have been altogether positive, which is why we will finally examine two types of implications. The fact that Chinese is shrinking and the highlighting of a cultural bias. Chinese is shrinking through a decline in the number of characters in common use, in large part because of the keyboard. Unlike in English, where certain words may fall out of popular vernacular, the alphabet means that they're always essentially accessible. Whenever a character falls out of use in Chinese, it's much harder to get back because it is its own idea, not built out of smaller pieces. When too many characters start to fall out of use, it can render some art and literature inaccessible to the general public. Additionally, handwriting is becoming far less common. Traditionally, Chinese is valued because of how it looks, and the computer has made it much easier to press a button than to write a character. Much like how Guitar Hero does not help you become a composer, increased ability to type Chinese does not correspond with an increased ability to, to write Chinese. Additionally, the advent of the Chinese computer highlights a cultural bias. When typing first came around, many believed that China would never be able to adapt. A sentiment called Orientalism. According to Tom Mullaney in the aforementioned foreign policy article, we've reached a kind of Orientalism 2.0. The idea that the Chinese language is somehow inferior still pervades society today, with one article published by an American science fiction writer on May 16th of 2016 calling the Chinese language, or calling technology, the wheelbarrow for the millstone around the Chinese culture's neck. The idea that some languages are inherently better than others extends not just to Chinese, but to other character-based languages, like Japanese, Korean, and Arabic. Despite the fact that Chinese has so successfully adapted to so many technologies, many still believe that they'll need to alphabetize in order to become a modern language. China, the advent of the Chinese keyboard has led to the development of predictive texting technologies and has also led China to massively increase its literacy rate. At the same time, Chinese is shrinking, and handwriting, a traditional art in China, is becoming far less common. Additionally, many still view Chinese as a burden. In the spirit of MC Hammer, however, even though his dance may not have been entirely culturally sensitive at all, his sentiment was sound and has outlived his career. You can't touch this. Unlike Hammer Pants, the Chinese language isn't going anywhere anytime soon.